This is Tom Hodgson coming to you from the Gerald E. Eddy Discovery Center in the Waterloo Recreation Area, where we are going to introduce you to some outdoor discoveries of some of the wonderful things you can expect to see and do here in the Waterloo Recreation Area. As this spring is springing all around us here and the flowers are blooming and the frogs are coming out and singing and croaking and the birds are beginning to set up nesting territory, uh, the snakes are also coming out of hibernation and uh, uh, cool sunny spring days are great times to find snakes out sunning themselves to warm up. Now, uh, Great if you happen to like snakes but uh, if you're a little fearful of snakes there are a lot of people who refuse to walk trails and go out in the woods because they're afraid they might see a snake. The two most common snakes found uh, here in the Waterloo Recreation Area and in southern Michigan are the garter snake and the common water snake. Both of them are quite harmless and would just as soon avoid people if they had the chance. So you're really in very little danger if you're going to be walking out on the trails in the Waterloo area as far as snakes are concerned. So I thought we'd start out today by taking a look at a garter snake. Now if you happen to be uh, out in the woods and you'd like to catch snakes, why uh, uh, an old pillowcase is a great thing to use for catching snakes. You simply put your hand inside the pillowcase and reach down and grab the snake because, of course, harmless snakes like garter snakes might bite if, if uh, you try to pick them up. And after all, if, somebody is, if I was a garter snake and somebody as large as me reached down to pick me up, I'd probably bite too. But their teeth are so small that they uh, can't even bite through a pillowcase so that uh, uh, you can safely pick them up. It's better to do that, pick them up with your hands rather than step on them because you're liable to injure the snake. But then again, it's not necessary to catch the snakes. You can just look at them and let them crawl away, which they're more than happy to do. So we've caught this garter snake, and we're just going to reverse the process and turn the bag inside out. And uh, that will leave my hand on the inside and the snake on the outside. As you see, this garter snake isn't being very threatening, even though uh, he was caught only yesterday, and of course will be released as soon as we're done with the program today. Uh, they are quite harmless. Sometimes they'll pretend to bite if you first pick them up, but once you have them in captivity, they're usually pretty quiet. And it's kind of a cool day today, and he's feeling cool against my skin, and so I think he's kind of enjoying the warmth of my hand. Now when you hold a snake, you should support as much of the snake's body as possible and that will allow him to feel comfortable and, and quiet down. Of course we can see this snake is uh, sticking out his tongue. The tongue is a smelling organ, it's not something that uh, is going to injure anyone. He doesn't catch insects with it, but he does smell and track down his prey. Since he's built rather low to the ground, he can't see very far ahead and so he can often follow frogs or other small prey uh, by picking up their scent or in, or in kind of a scent trail along the way. Now snakes of course <clears throat> having no legs have to invent some other way to move along and they have two methods of locomotion. One is by pushing the broad flat scales on their stomach against the ground because each scale is attached to muscles and ligaments which are attached to ribs which allow them to push along and against the ground with those flat scales. Another thing that snakes do is to push with the curves of their body. And so snakes, even though they may not all be aquatic, are pretty good swimmers because the natural swimming motion is also the natural motion they use to move along the ground. Now this is not a gardener snake, this is a garter snake. It's called a, a garter snake because uh, of the light flecks on its body that uh, sort of make it look elastic like a lady's garter back in the old days when ladies used to wear garters. So it's not a gardener snake, it's not a garden snake, it's a garter snake. And of course the garter snake has stripes 
uh, and these stripes vary in color from bluish to greenish to yellow depending upon the individual this, uh, that you happen to have and even though these stripes seem pretty bold they really help them to uh, blend in with their surroundings garter snakes uh, are snakes that feed on frogs and toads and uh, night crawlers earthworms things like this and now you see how calm he is <clears throat> because uh, he is being held in the proper way he's enjoying the warmth of my hand and he is a little cool as we notice when his tongue was flicking in and out uh, it was flicking in and out very slowly which indicates he's a little cooler than he would like to be because his metabolism and his body mo motions speed up uh, as he gets warmer so this friendly garter snake is totally non-venomous harmless snake the, probably the most common snake seen uh, on the trails here in Waterloo Recreation Area. Usually before they shed their skin their eyes get kind of cloudy because they even shed the scale over their eyes and uh, then about 24 hours before they're ready to shed their eyes clear up again and then they begin rubbing against objects and peeling the skin back starting with the head and eventually uh, literally crawling right out of the old skin. Now the old skin is just the outer clear layer of the skin, it's not the part that contains the color. So let's put this uh, garter snake back in the bag and uh, take a look at a snake skin. Oh, here, here's the skin of a blue racer, another fairly common uh, snake here in, in southern lower Michigan, although it's not seen nearly as often as the garter snake but as you can see it's the outer clear layer of the skin that is shed even uh, the scales over the eye so here's a, a piece of skin from the head of the blue racer and you can even see the scales that were covering the eyes that were actually uh, shed and it may be several weeks or several months depending on how much they eat and how fast they are growing uh, before they shed their skin again now rattlesnakes get a new rattle each time they shed their skin. So you cannot tell the age of a rattlesnake by the number of rattles it has on its uh, tail because it may gain two or three rattles in a single season if uh, it's had plenty to eat and is growing and is good and healthy. I have another snake here, the probably the next most common snake that people are likely to see here in the Waterloo Recreation Area. And that's the common or northern water snake. Now we notice that the garter snake is quite easy to handle um, and come down quite nicely when it uh, was in my hand. The northern water snake on the other hand is not a very friendly snake. If you try to catch it and pick it up it will bite and uh, if that doesn't make you put it down it will go to the bathroom all over you which uh, usually suffices to uh, discourage people from picking them up. So I'm going to take a little more time in getting this snake out here so that I can get a hold of the head. Now this snake is the one that people often refer to as the water moccasin and a lot of them are killed mistaking them for a poisonous snake. We have no water moccasins in Michigan he's uh, doing his thing for us here but this is not a snake that you want to try to keep as a pet or try to catch or pick up because they do not uh, handle well they're a nervous snake they don't calm down and uh, don't make good pets so this is probably not a snake that you want to try to, to pick up or catch um, as you can see, he would like to probably bite me. I'm not real concerned about being bitten because the snake's teeth are so small that they would barely leave a scratch. Now this snake is found around water, hence the name water snake, uh, especially along uh, streams, along, along lake shores. 
and it's commonly out uh, sunning itself on the warm sunny days and this is when people often often encounter it but this is not a water moccasin water moccasins are found in the southern United States only literally uh, hundreds of miles south of, of Michigan this snake feeds on fish both alive and dead it also eats frogs and other animals that it might encounter uh, in the uh, in and around the water. Well, we're going to catch this water snake who's uh, crawling along on the ground hoping to escape. Uh, I'm putting my hand inside the pillowcase, reaching down, picking up the snake, and I see he's uh, attempting to bite a little bit. But again, I have that uh, my hand inside the pillowcase, so I have no reason to fear that I'm going to get any teeth marks left on my hand. Now I'm just going to turn the bag inside out and now the snake is on the inside and my hand is on the outside tie a knot in it now I can put it under my belt and uh, pull out another bag and I'm ready to catch another snake that's it for snakes for the day so I want to invite you to come back again to, to visit us at the Discovery Center in the Waterloo Recreation Area and of course you can come out here on your own anytime you like the building is open from 10 to 5 uh, Tuesday through Sunday and the trails are open 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, there are seven miles of trails in and around the Discovery Center and 23 miles of trails including the hiking trail that stretches clear across the park so coming to you from the Waterloo Recreation Area the Eddy Discovery Center good afternoon <music>